And I want to end with a story that I told the last time I was here, but people have asked me to tell it again. It was something that happened to me almost two years ago. And this was kind of this odd event that happened when I was getting, um, when I was in the Indiana airport. I was landing in the Indianapolis airport, and I had a four-hour layover. And the minute I got on, the, uh, the minute the plane landed, I turned on my cell phone because I'm very important at all. Yeah. So I answered the cell phone, got a call from a client. My book had just been published, The Transforming Superheroes. And I, meanwhile, I'm getting all this stuff together because I, you know, I had been a mom, you know, so I was used to doing two things at once. So they said, can we buy 300 copies of your book for when you come to this presentation? I said, gee, uh, yes. So that was terrific. And so I sold 300 copies of my book. I'm getting my thing down. I'm rushing. I am rushing. I have four hours in the Indianapolis airport, and I am rushing. What is that all about? Anyway, so I'm getting off the plane. I've sold 400, 300 copies of my book, and I haven't even gotten off the runway. I'm already having a great day. So I've got four hours layover, and I think, what am I going to do? And I decided to go to the express spa and get a shoulder massage. So I'm going to treat myself. So I go in to the express spa. And there in the express spa is this soldier. And she's getting a pedicure. And she's in full desert cami. So I walk up to the desk and I say, I want a 20-minute shoulder massage. And I want to pay for that soldier's pedicure. So had my shoulder massage, came up to pay. Soldier's gone. The woman who works there said to me, I just want to tell you that when I told the soldier that someone was paying for her pedicure, she said to me that she was being deployed today to Iraq, and she didn't really have the money to pay for the pedicure and that she just wanted to feel like a girl one more time. And she was in tears. And I said, well, you know, it's not a big deal. But and she said, are you in a rush? And I said, I actually have three and a half hours. <laughs> she stood up and she said, would everybody who works here please come to the desk? And everybody who worked in the express spa in the Indianapolis airport stood up and came to the desk. And she said, this is the lady who paid for the pedicure for the soldier. Could we hold hands and pray for her safe return? What happened that day was I have some bad habits. This doesn't surprise you. You've known me for 40 minutes. When I started smooching when I was 14 years old, I always kept my eyes open. You never knew. Old habits die hard. And when we took hands, I had my eyes open. And I looked at this group. And I thought, what an amazing group. We're black and white and Asian, probably gay and straight. We're young, and I'm certainly old. And I have made one small donation. And this woman is risking her life so that we can be free. And my question to you is, who got the most out of that gift? Who got the most? Was it the soldier or the donor? That woman did not need to say, let's acknowledge this donor. Did not need to bring us together in community. You can do good works on your own. And you can write a check on your own. But it can be so much bigger. That woman 
took the time to thank me, to build this little community that was a, as ephemeral as a bubble. And that's what we can do as well.